Hi everyone, we have just come back from the first day of lab visits and we visited Vikram Sarvai space exhibition after that. It was a wonderful day. Unfortunately, we couldn't, up, uh, we cannot upload any video because we didn't take any video. We were not allowed to and uh, all the Vikram Sarvai space exhibition is open to anyone and we if we get time we are going to go there later someday and um, possibly upload some pictures and make uh, some videos which we will be able to upload so today uh, we saw quite a few interesting things parts of satellites and how they are made and it, it was really quite wonderful uh, the experience, the sheer size of it, some of them were very big and some of them were small and it was a great experience to wear uh, special clothes from head to the toes and we had to enter a place where we were uh, cleaned with these air pipes yeah so it was quite <laughs> wonderful that made us supposedly dust free uh, and it was such an overwhelming sight to see those monstrous um, instruments and those satellites and those rooms they were full of gigantic uh, machines uh, yeah so now Aurikthru would be telling you what he uh, rather what we saw today so he asked them quite a few questions and he's very studious he took down pages and pages of notes uh, so he's going to tell you all so, that he has but I couldn't take the notes from the uh, one poor portion because we were not allowed the paper and pen inside that. Okay, so, so tell all that you tell, can. But uh, <coughs> wait a minute and just bring the page. Okay, while it brings the page, let me just show you the outside. It's evening, it's a little bit, yeah, it's just five minutes. Uh, it'll be eight. So this is the view from the balcony. We have a washing machine here, as we have, as I already showed to you. Uh, you can see there's fence, but it's really not very high. So you can see autos plied outside, but the noise is really, you know, cut out, and all of this is very, very quiet. I, I am sure it will look absolutely wonderful in the early morning so now let's just go back to the notes because we have a lot to tell so at first we went to the Vikram hall and there we had a 15 minutes or something like that a briefing session with the I think it was he was assistant yeah, director. Yeah, assistant director. Assistant director. So he briefed us and he just uh, motivated us for um, doing uh, for the upcoming uh, journey. So first we went to the thermovac chamber and uh, we went actually to the testing center. So what happens in the thermovac chamber is that. Uh, there is a big tank inside that that is known as the thermovac chamber and that is a testing chamber so that tank the diameter is 5.5 meter diameter and that is the most probably that is the biggest one in this old campus of uh, space application center yeah, the and new one is at Bhopal. new one is Bhopal Bhopal, Bhopal. Bhopal campus mm -hmm. we will go in the last uh, last portion of the trip or I don't know maybe but we will go there and there will uh, we can see the 6.5 meter diameter one and uh, lowest one is the 0.3 meter diameters uh, chamber so it varies you can see the variation from 0.3 it goes to 6.5 meters the diameter so what it does is that uh, there is <coughs> inside that Ch a chamber inside that uh, tank the small payloads are inserted and before they and they are tested you see when the 
uh, machineries when the rockets go up and the uh, uh, vacuum uh, and uh, in the outer space when they travel so they have to go through many lot of extreme temperatures and there there is and there is all, only vacuum so what happens in earth is that we have air so air what it does is whenever the surface gets heated the air just radiates the air radiates the heat uh, heat and takes it away from that singular portion but in vacuum that is not possible so they try to uh, try to test that so that the heated per <coughs> heated portion automatically radiates its heat to other parts so in the testing center what it does it tests that it can it can can it easily dissipate heat so first in the tank when the machine is uh, inserted the tank is closed and make sure make sure that it is airtight and then from uh, inside the air is totally drawn out and the vacuum is created inside that uh, tank and below the, and then the surface and the below the surface there is another vibration <coughs> in isolation that surface so what it does that so that vibration the uh, you know we can have earthquakes or things like that earth can rumble so so that the earth's vibration does not affect the internal situation so what it does it totally isolates the uh, external vibration from the inside so then also they while are, the rocket is launched so there can be a lot of jerking so it yes. uh, also sees to it that the parts which are inside they do not get uh, hampered due to the jerkings which can be caused and uh, liquid nitrogen is used to cool down the temperature and also it does away with the radiation because the heat is gone and they were kind enough to uh, show us how uh, that chamber is opened so we saw that huge thing uh, opening with a great noise and we could s uh, we were fortunate enough to see uh, what's actually inside it's really something great you, you uh, if you get permission you can uh, you should go for a visit okay <laughs> so and there, there are different pumps and uh, the vacuum they are they told us that uh, the vacuum measurement was 5 in 5 into 10 to the power minus 6 millibar vacuum is uh, present inside that tank and it is uh, made fully convection free atmosphere with uh, many many layers on layers of uh, aluminium plates to metal plates and then many many sort of plates but they they couldn't uh, tell all of uh, all about them and uh, there is an also an uh, internal rotation of 96,000 hour rotation per minute. So there you can know the speed scale uh, through which the uh, function is going on. And uh, there is also <coughs> one cryo pump on the outside. So there is a um, from my, uh, minus 100 to plus 100 degree centigrade. The, there is a panel heating and they check that so that the temperature is uniformly uh, radiated and uniformly everywhere is the temperature is singular even if it is uh, minus 40 uh, 4435 uh, degree centigrade uh, they ensure that that uniform everywhere is uniformly heated no place is unevenly heated or something like that just they uh, just in case this happens they will again look at the problem and they this is sort of a testing center so before moving on to the next part they just test here so that every part is working and fully functional and so we from there we went to the uh, sensor and electronic development area sensor and sensor electronic development area there we so yeah yeah so, yeah, so uh, oh another thing was that uh, there were approximately 400 sensors inside yes. that tank 400 sensors <coughs> there was inside and then we moved on to the CEDA or sensor electronic development area 
Yes, it was. Uh, the only thing is that we had to uh, keep out our shoes, although the experience of putting on that special suit, um, which you might have seen in some movies, so wearing that suit uh, with, the, with the cap, it was really quite a wonderful experience uh, and we got to see the workings of the uh, working from the monitor so uh, not only did we see the parts of the satellite we also went to the control room where uh, we no, saw so I can uh, tell about the CEDA and yeah. number of things like mm. that so in CEDA what we uh, first uh, saw was uh, two types of uh, telescopes two types of telescope first one was used to take aerial pictures of the city may, maybe from 5000 meters above the ground there so and they they the, that camera that uh, telescope is used to take high resolution pictures of cities only so and uh, and they can also use uh, they also use this telescopic images as uh, so, these aerial views and with the and everything we know that every thing on uh, earth has a reflective index and uh, everything reflects light and with the help of the with the help of the reflecting index they can uh, see which land is fertile and which land is not and this helps in our agricultural processes and then we moved on to the next telescope and that was uh, the meteorological telescope and they they it was it was again used for it was the distance was several thousand miles from, away from the uh, ground uh, so uh, like that so they were and that in that telescope there was one sounder and one uh, imager uh, so these things were these things are used to track the weather of the earth so these things are used for tracking uh, what uh, where is there is cyclonic where waves forming and where the temperature is with uh, where it is uh, help and now it is helping uh, the Indian meteorological department in <clears throat> forecasting the weather and now we can uh, they are ensuring so that we don't have don't need the help of uh, the foreign countries so uh, for tracking our weather and soon they will I know I am proud about ISRO that they will achieve this that one day and IMD won't need foreign help and they will be all here ISRO will be helping them fully and till then let's have hope and uh, from then next we moved on to the uh, Chandrayaan 2 planning and before that say they said that Chandrayaan 1 was an orbiter mission so in they said about the uh, what uh, the orbiter does orbiter takes uh, uh, pictures and sends it and sends it to the ISRO and but uh, it takes pictures of a moon and every crater so Chandrayaan 2 they are planning to launch a la lander they are planning to la launch a lander and with a robot inside. with a robot inside it will be a robotic lander and first robot to uh, go from India the two and so that uh, no problems happens uh, while no problem happens while long, uh, landing the uh, on the moon surface the orbiter se is sends mis uh, pictures and sends pictures and there is a algorithm so that coding they uh, they will enter that coding into Chandrayaan 2 and so that the Chandrayaan 2 will be fully automated and so that that pictures it will analyze the pictures from orbiter mission Chandrayaan 1 and after analyzing it itself will choose a landing spot for its uh, for land uh, it itself will choose a landing spot and will land there so I also asked them so that means we can expect uh, one long lander mission on Mars to send they said that they are planning about that also <coughs> yeah so it was really wonderful and there are some interesting things which they uh, said so one uh, is that the question was uh, rather asked by Oritro that uh, well there are so many things uh, when they were talking about radiations the uh, different types of radiations uh, which they can detect with these satellites so 
they said that well there are many things in the universe and this is something which I have always believed and they confirmed it so officially I heard it from an ISRO scientist that well there are a lot of things which they get a lot of data which they get a lot of input inputs which they get a lot of radiations which they get but they do not know what they are so they said that there are lots of things on, uh, on in space and they receive that uh, they receive some form of signal but they don't know what's there so they say that maybe someday in the future we will be able to read these uh, radiations because there are many radiations which we know are there out in space and we cannot yet detect them we can detect their presence but we cannot understand them even in food. earth they said that even in earth we can see many minuscule they can see and sense minuscule waves and particles but they do not know actually what are these things they are they <coughs> motivated us they said that that's why young minds are needed for sensing these things because uh, all is upon not upon them the future generation also needs to work upon work hard upon these so so why not? Why can't you also can come and be a part of this prestigious organization and find out what are the elemental mysteries <laughs> hiding in this universe <laughs> and help mankind to a better place. Well, after that we went to Vikram Saravai Space Exhibition which is open to the public and but we went straight from the labs uh, yes, so this reminds me that uh, we basically were provided uh, with a bus, so Government of India bus, mm -hmm. the ISRO bus and uh, because we really had to take the bus, we took the bus but each time it was less than I think 30 <laughs> seconds or so, so each time we had to get on a bus, so getting up took more than a minute, settling down took about a minute and then the trip lasted about 30 seconds and then we again could have walked easily <laughs> and would <laughs> so okay. these are some of the things which I guess well these things happen only in India <laughs> but <coughs> so it was mm, quite funny and then at uh, just by the side of ISRO guest house is um, the Vikram Saravai space exhibition and it's open from 9.30 am to 5.30 so if you uh, ever come to Ahmedabad then be sure to visit Vikram Saravai space exhibition uh, anytime uh, during this and we saw a 3D film and it was quite surprisingly narrated by Tom Cruise so uh, we were it, rather surprised but anyway it was a Hollywood production which um, they showed it was about the NASA's uh, International Space Station mm. that is floating above in the orbit of Earth yes and um, um, we, we saw so many wonderful things about how the people they live there how they eat how they shave how they bathe how they sleep and how they celebrate holidays <laughs> yes and how the earth looks uh, while um, a rocket is launched so we have all seen pictures of rocket being launched but while the rocket is going up how the earth looks as it keeps on getting smaller and smaller it's really quite uh, wonderful and some of the things that they do to uh, while they are floating in space, obviously not floating, they are. They have something to hold on to, and they are maybe fixing some parts of the satellite. Um, it it's it's quite fearful. It takes a lot of courage, and really hats off to these wonderful people who have dedicated their lives going up in space and helping out humanity uh, at at great cost to their lives. So, really hats off to these people. Uh, so seeing the video it really makes you wonder about the sacrifice which human beings can make when we think of humanity at large and this is really needed and seeing uh, them walking uh, it really makes you think a lot of things and definitely inspires you okay so after that uh, we saw around the exhibition mm. and we were given um, an ISRO cap yeah. yeah I can show it <coughs> yeah an ISRO cap and this is the ISRO cap and a key ring and a key ring a uh, key ring is okay here it is and the 
you also got these. Yeah. So this is the skidding has a speciality. I don't know whether I can show it. It's an hologram, holographic imagery. You can see it. Yes. So this is like that. And we even got our own books. And this was not from the exhibition. This was from the Vikram Hall yeah. uh, during the briefing session with assistant director. So different people and di there were different books given to uh, all of us. So this was that. And uh, I have got Bharat ke Anupam Drishya. That means splendid pictures of India. Yeah, so I've got the same book, but uh, it's in, in English. English. I don't know how they knew that I'm an English teacher. But <laughs> they gave okay, that. so they have wonderful it, pictures. Yeah, you can see it's the satellite pictures of this one is Meghalaya. This one is Meghalaya, and here is the written. What's about? What is it about? And we also got this wonderful folder uh, with a name mm -hmm. card holder. And, and also with a pen and with a isro pad, a note pad. So mm. not really a note pad, okay. But anyway, uh -huh. uh, it's so we are going to come back with lots of uh, goodies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now we will be taking a little bit of rest because we have had a long, tiresome train journey. Even though this day has been very exciting, so mm. we need to take a little bit of rest. Then we are going to go and have completely vegetarian food <laughs> it's that's the thing <laughs> so absolutely no non-veg that's uh, but the room is quite nice very nice the room is great yes uh, the room is great the only thing is that i think we have to get out some time to sneak in some non-veg food if we can <laughs> okay but it's gujarat <laughs> yeah no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are having a wonderful time with the team. 21, uh, people. 21 team members have come on this mm -hmm. visit. And there's another visit right after we go back to mm -hmm. Kolkata. Another group would be coming because not everyone has fit in the same group. So mm -hmm. 21, uh, yeah, and out of that there are 7 to 8 students. And Oritro Bhattacharya is one of them. It's really quite a feat that out of so many students who participated in quiz and debate so he's one and of the elocution. yeah and the yeah the elocution uh, the extempo so he stood first in a debate contest and he's a student of humanities and he spoke about uh, a subject related to science a debate contest about that which really goes on to show that our uh, stream demarcations are for our studies they do not necessarily reflect our intelligence okay so he has made us proud he has made us school proud he has made uh, West Bengal proud obviously he has stood first in a debate of uh, which was held in three languages so Hindi Bengali and English combined he stood first and it's really quite a laudable feat <laughs> okay so tomorrow we hope to make more videos or give a report like this <laughs> Okay, thank you so much.